I'm afraid for the if I sail away for a new attack, I'm uh, scared mm. for uh, if they should come after me again. Yeah. Because next time maybe they have guns. Yeah. I'm not sure I survived that. Yeah. Media around the world are reporting on the tragedy at sea. And everything looks like an accident or a natural death. But even three weeks after the shipwreck, there are still many question marks. Magnus' friends and family in Sweden are worried that something is being covered up. Hi Jens, uh, you don't know me. Uh, I, uh, my name is Marina. I um, am Magnus's best friend, but as you know, I, I think you know, uh, Magnus has been found dead on the shore of Colombia after trying to get from Colombia to Panama. And um, we, his brothers and um, a group of good friends have united because we're all very worried about the fact that there is no information being given to, uh, given to us. Um, the body seems not even to have been identified. We hear stories that it has been identified, but it hasn't because it has not been officially uh, confirmed to his brothers that the body has been identified. They have sent dental records to Colombia, but they are still in the process of identifying the body. Um, of course, we are 99.9% .9 sure that it is Magnus's body because it was found near the boat as far as we know. And also we haven't heard from him in all this time. And it was for sure his boat that was found. So where shall he be without his boat for so long? But why we are contacting you is because we are wanting to talk to you, especially his brothers. At this point, it may be important to introduce myself for the greatest possible transparency. I am a journalist from Germany. Before I swept office for a boat six years ago, I worked as a reporter for the German Financial Times and the business magazine Capital. Since I live on the boat, I mainly write for the water sports magazine Float. I met Magnus in Santa Marta shortly after the pirate attack. Like other sailors, we try to help him as best as we could. I interviewed Magnus for several hours with the camera rolling. I uh, have one bleeding wound here. Okay. From a, a bottle or something. In addition to the article, a video was created that was viewed over 160,000 times. In the comments, many people asked how they could help Magnus and if there was a way to donate to him. This led to the GoFundMe campaign. At first, Magnus was embarrassed and didn't want to accept donations, but then he agreed. And he was overwhelmed by all the support. You already donated a little bit in Swedish crowns, so it's not this is ridiculous. So you already have 14,000. 122 Swedish crowns. Whoa. Which goes to your bank account. Oh. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. We stayed in touch even when we left Colombia in mid of January. In this report, I would like to look for clues what could have led to Magnus' death. Magnus himself provides many of the answers to the questions. 
In the interview we had at the beginning of January, Magnus also talked about his life at sea, the condition of the boat and how he manages long passages as a single-handed sailor. All indications that could explain a possible cause of death. I would also like to refute some rumors that have been carried through the media, based on facts, not hearsay. In the end, only an autopsy will be able to sheet light to Magnus' death. But to do this, the body found must first be identified. Shortly after the sunken yard was found, various local media reported that the body had been identified by Magnus' brother, Martin. International media picked up this claim. And I also quoted the Colombian press with a statement. A mistake. Magnus' brother sent me a message. Martin was wondering where this information was coming from. Because he and his brother were still waiting for the identification. All they knew was that Magnus' dental cards had been sent from Sweden to Colombia. Identifying Magnus should be easy, also for another reason. Okay. I broke uh, the hand on the Atlantic uh, some years ago. Okay. And um, I have a metal plate in here oh. with nine bolts in. Oh, okay. So I cannot move. My hands are good. Uh. And another piece of information piqued my interest. Do the Swedish authorities send a police officer abroad for every death, even if it's a natural death? To find out more, I contacted the Swedish embassy in Bogota and asked various questions. The answers were short and not very enlightening, but a seemingly harmless sentence, packed diplomatically, could be the reason why there is no progress in identification. This means, if the dead person is not identified as a Swede, the Swedish officials cannot investigate. And whenever there is a lack of information, there is room for speculations. But what I do not understand is, we have a Swedish investigator down in Colombia, and he has not even yet seen the body. Don't you guys feel it's very strange? With my experience, we're not even an investigator a police officer comes down to investigate in the uh, circumstances of what happened to Magnus, that means they're hiding something. They are not wanting to find out the full truth. And of course not. The Colombian government would never, never go out in official papers and say, yes, he was murdered by one of our own or by pirate. They will lose the whole sailing community. They will really lose the whole sailing community. One question is popping up. Is the police trustworthy? At least Magnus had an opinion on that. Yeah, after the first break-in here in Santa Marta, I went to the police and they said, ah, come back tomorrow, come back tomorrow. And and then I have some Colombian friends and uh, we went together to the police and uh, he was very upset, my Colombian friend. Mm. And the police took up the telephone and called the bandit. Who had, they knew exactly who it was, they even knew his telephone number. Ah, he mm. will come with you, he will come here and bring your things. And they gave, he came and gave me a diving mask and a broken telephone. And the police said, uh, now you have your things and uh, now the, the business is finished. At this point, I think it is important to introduce Magnus, because he was a special character and he can do it best himself. Uh, you are sailing for 30 years. No. Long distance, 30 years. Uh, so then you were, what do you say, when you were 27, you started? 27 when I left, 1987. And then I sailed for uh, 10 years with the early 18. Okay. And then another 10 years with the Sunwind, 20. 
and a shipwreck with that boat. A shipwreck? A, a shipwreck with it. Oh, where? I, uh, south of Italy. Okay. Mm. I have a pension of $230 I'm living on. Okay. But that was your uh, actually intention when you left Sweden. You knew that you have you live on a low budget, but yeah, that's yeah. the kind of life you choose for yourself. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So. And what's so special about it? Uh, freedom. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I sailed around the Mediterranean for 20 years, um, and it was the freedom, and uh, I was not dependent on anyone. When I need to take up my boat for anti-fouling, I just went to boat yard and told them I don't have money, but I have a sewing machine. Can you take up my boat, make anti-fouling, and uh, I pay with my sewing machine? Okay. Not one time they said no. Not one time. So that was how you made money in the meantime. So you had a sewing machine, and sewing. you also said before you learned how to make sails and uh, covers. Yeah. So. Yeah, I make uh, spray hoods, uh, I make tents, I make wind scoops, uh, bimini's. I make almost everything except uh, cushions. Okay. But uh, before, when I cruised Greece, I lived uh, only from the money I got from the sewing machine. Okay. I had no pension, nothing. Yeah. I can live with, with no money also. Mm. But uh, $230 uh, a month. All over that is uh, extra. Okay. And then I can buy a beer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now I, yeah. I live uh, very simple. Okay. Yeah. And I have food aboard for uh, at least three, four months now. Okay. Magnus polarized people with his lifestyle. He was a free soul, an artist of life. Okay. He had no money but dreams. And he was closer than ever to his greatest achievement sailing the Pacific. Could a natural death have ended his life? Yeah, things are changing. And me, I am changing. Yeah. I get older and all this. But I don't give up. Yeah. So, uh, what can I do? I must continue. Yeah. I cannot, what shall I do? Lay down and scream on the... No. No. So... The plan now is to prepare the boat, to recover a little bit for yeah. yourself, that you feel fit enough. Yeah, because I'm still in big pain and I'm very stiff in my body after mm. all the beating. Uh, I like to stay here for one week mm. and to recover myself. Do you have, a, just for my interest, kind of a health insurance? No. No. Uh, Someone told me I must blame myself if yeah. something happens. Um, but it was not a big problem on the hospital, no. So, uh, I have pain in all my, complete all my body. Okay. Magnus, 64 years old, wasn't in the best of health. Added to this was the stress caused by the pirate attack and the fear. A natural death is definitely conceivable. Another question is if his boat, Docus, was seaworthy enough for this area. His boat, there is no other way to put it, was in a poor condition. But Magnus was used to sail with his boat. He even crossed the Atlantic with it in 88 days from Canary Islands to Aruba. I, I inherited some money and then I bought this boat. Okay. And the boat is a uh, um, Lawin. Swedish made. 32, so, yeah. And when did you buy it? So, how long ago? Uh, three years ago. Oh, okay. And then you sailed the boat. Where did you buy it? In Sweden. In Sweden? And then you sailed it down. Uh, non stop okay. to Las Palmas. I drifted away. <laughs> okay. No wind, no engine. And the engine, so you have. An engine? On? I have an engine, yeah. But it's not working or you it's, don't It's use... only the start motor. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, I only need the start motor. Okay. But I don't have money to it. So do you have uh, the equipment on board? Do you have a chart plotter in the meantime? Or do you do navigation by sea charts or... Uh... I have my school atlas and uh, hand GPS. Okay. It's working. Okay. 
I have some seat shot for some areas. Mm. And now I have the Sunblast pilot, pilot okay. book. Yeah. So, and there is all coordinates, everything. Okay. Yeah. So so it's, it's, but it's, yeah, old school navigation. Yeah. I have my sextant still. Okay. And I know exactly yeah. how to handle it. So yeah. I give lessons in it also, how, okay. to, how to use it. Yeah. I'm counting it will cost me $5,000 to yeah. uh, fix up my boat. Yeah. And where shall I get that money from? So, yeah. well, it's good enough to uh, cruise around here. Do you have an uh, autopilot, a wind vane? Or no, a, I'm no. Hand, hand steering. Yeah, well, but what do you do when you cross the Atlantic? You just fix a rudder and... No, I hand steer. Yeah, but uh, you cannot do it 88 I, days yes, for 24 hours. I did. I did. No, for 24 hours. When I was tired, I took down the sails. Ah, okay. When it was calm, I took down the sails. Okay. I've done it for many years, so... No, that's I just really... take my time. Okay. <laughs> but it's not good for my hand yeah. to hand steer so, yeah. so much. But uh, let's say in the 50s and the 60s, people were sailing like that. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah. Uh, when they had no uh, wind pilots or autopilots in the 50s, 60s maybe, they were hand steering people. Yeah. And But I don't care about the electric system because I have no time for that. Okay. I like to live. Okay. And then I got some blast and then I was thinking about living uh, Robinson Crusoe life there for a while. The boat was in a really bad shape, but Magnus used to be a very experienced sailor. So how many times have you crossed the Atlantic? Uh, five times, I think. Okay. And I also make uh, non-stop sailings, sailings from uh, Las Palmas and to Sweden. Yeah. Okay. I also been up to um, Lofoot and the nor northern Norway yeah. on yeah, my way up yeah. up to Arctic. Wow. Uh, so. Uh, do you know how many miles you have sailed in your lifetime? It's more than two hundred thousand nautical miles. Close to 250,000, I think. That's it's uh, more than 10 times around the world yeah. on, the, on the equator. Wow. Uh, that's a lot. It's a lot, yeah. yeah. And you also do, um, um, as a skipper, so someone hired you as a skipper to bring a boat for yeah. deliveries. Yeah. Uh, I make uh, delivered jobs in Mediterranean over the Atlantic and uh, also in Scandinavia for Hans especially. Yeah, okay, yeah, that's what he said, yeah. The Hans company. Yeah. So you always took the boats from uh, Germany, Greifswald, and then brought it to... I brought it to Copenhagen, to Göteborg, to Stockholm, a few times each. Yeah. And from... Yeah, yeah around Scandinavia with, with, with the Hans boats. Wow. Uh, I sailed maybe 10, 10 different hands about sea. <laughs> As an experienced sailor, Magnus wanted to keep distance to shore. But why did his boat crash on the beach? So this is a dangerous coast. Hmm. Uh, I, and I stay away from the Colombian coast as much as possible. So what's the plan to go further uh, out? Yeah, I like to go uh, north, maybe 15 miles north before I turn uh, west yeah. and, uh, and then southwest down to yeah. San Blas. That's my plan now. Yeah. And it looks like Magnus stuck to that plan. Friends in Sweden were able to reconstruct his path based on telephone calls. After 6.26 miles, contact was lost, but that's normal. Magnus was still heading far away from the coast. But the currents of the coast of Colombia are brutal. In general, they run parallel to the coast. But why was his boat washed ashore at Puerto Valero if Magnus was really far out at sea? One explanation would be that the boat was caught in the current while Magnus was sleeping. 
also here, if you go to some blast or you start sailing, steering by hand, so when it's getting dark or you're getting tired, then you bring down the sails. I take down the sails, go to sleep. And then for how long do you sleep? Sorry? For how long do you sleep then? Just... I think I wake up every hour and have a lookout. Okay. And then go to bed again. Wow. But even, especially in these waves here outside, so it's... Uh, you can yeah. sleep because without sails out, the boat is... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no problem. Okay. <laughs> wow. But even if Magnus became disoriented or the current pushed him ashore, would he have died? And wouldn't he have tried to notify his friends in Sweden, like he did during the pirate attack in December? The, uh, how did the Coast Guard um, knew that you were around there? Uh, I've heard that Peter, my friend in Sweden, that after the first attack, I still have my tel I still had my telephone, so I sent a message to him. This mm. is emergency, and I send it also the latitude and longitude to him, and he send the, 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 my message to the Swedish rescue team mm -hmm. in uh, Göteborg, in Sweden. Okay. And they contacted the army here. Ah, and, okay. and then the army found me. Or was his boat brought close to shore against his will? Like in the pirate attack, end of December. You your boat yeah. closer to shore? Yeah, yeah. for sure. I, um, yeah. For sure, I should take the boat. Yeah. And maybe kill me, I don't know. Yeah, so we are threatened to life. I was threatened to life, yes. But let's have a look at the weather at this time when Magnus left Santa Marta. However, it seems very plausible that Magnus came into a storm. This is also supported by the fact that you can see a photo of the stranded yard with a reefed mainsail. It's conceivable that Magnus had an accident on the boat in high waves, for example, when reefing. So let's take a look at the weather report. This is the official storm warning from the Colombian authorities for the day Magnus left Santa Marta and for the coming days. And it doesn't look good. Strong winds and very high waves. And in the next 72 hours, conditions are expected to worsen. Magnus knowingly accepted the risk. In a Facebook post on the eve of his departure, he wrote, Despite gale warnings, I probably leave Colombia tomorrow morning, local time. But why did he leave under these circumstances? Sadly, there are lots of rumors and also false informations spread by newspapers. One article suggests that Magnus committed suicide. In my opinion, these rumors are complete nonsense. They are based on a poorly researched newspaper article based on the dubious statement of an American sailor. Friends, family and everyone who was in close contact with Magnus had sensed that he was full of confidence and plans again. The article appeared in the city paper Bogota and is full of errors. Starting with details about the boat, a YouTube channel of Magnus with 2,500,000 subscribers and false statements that are put into Magnus' mouth. The article also suggests that Magnus left the marina without paying. This is wrong. The article also mentions a mysterious second person on board. This is also wrong. The author of the article quotes US sailor Peter Emblen who describes Magnus as depressed because he couldn't pay the marina fees. In his opinion, Magnus sinks his boat himself to go down with him. The entire text by Richard Emblen is based on the statements of a witness named Peter Emblen. Certainly just a coincidence. In order to completely dispel the rumor that Magnus had cheated the marina, I also contacted the office. The marina manager confirmed that Magnus has paid. Also he said that there was no one else on board besides Magnus. And there are many more questions, like the one about Monica, a woman from near Santa Marta who Magnus introduced as his girlfriend two weeks before his departure. He visited her in Taganga, her hometown, 
and posted videos of it on Facebook. Colombian friends warned Magnus that he should not trust anyone, especially because it was known that Magnus had received some money through the fundraising campaign. Magnus also had a dispute with an agent who was supposed to help him clear out, because he demanded 240 US dollars for help, which is why Magnus left without checking out. It is also mysterious that a man from Barranquilla logged into his Facebook account using Magnus' cell phone, which was stolen during the pirate attack. Magnus is said to have recognized the man in the picture as a man who stabbed him with a bread knife. Now I tried to break the, the thumb of one of them. So I, I took his hand to, to greet him uh, and uh, then I, I grabbed his thumb and uh, I bended it. Uh, oh. But it, I, don't, I did not break it. But I think uh, he cannot use the thumb for a while. Okay. So you will recognize him when someone is coming with... And then he was coming with a knife and then... Uh, oh. Yeah, he got angry. In addition to Magnus' fear that he might be attacked at sea again, there seemed to be a lot of inconsistencies. That's why it is so important that the body will be identified. To find peace for Magnus, his family and his friends. But if you look at the facts, there's a lot that seems to point to an accident. The storm, the waves, the poor condition of the boat. Hardly any sailor would have set sails with this boat in this weather. Despite Magnus, a very uncommon sailor.